and a click. Hi, I'm Paul Murphy. <clears throat> How are you doing there? <coughs> well, I'm Paul Murphy with a croaky throat. I thought I'd do uh, a few readings standing up, uh, mainly because, uh, well, <laughs> let's not go down that route. Okay, so uh, my um, book. Um, uh, this is uh, book two in my Extremely Unlikely History of the World series. Um, this is uh, this one goes from N, New Zealand, I think, to uh, Zaire. And uh, available on all good websites. So, what am I going to do here? I'll start at Suriname. Suriname. My Suriname is Murphy. What's yours? Fun fact, I can't hear your answers. Swaziland, often confused with Switzerland by people with poor hearing, with Cleethorpes by people with very poor hearing, with Germany by Hitler's taxi driver one night when he was pissed, and with a pelican by blind people. Fun fact, I'm sure it's true. Blind person, ah, <laughs> Percy, you naughty naughty pelican, where did you fly off to last night? It's good to have you home, Swaziland. Blind person, what? No throat warble, hello back, Swaziland. Blind person, Percy, I hope you're not angry with me. Why aren't you talking to me? Blind person, sorry, Swaziland. Blind person, I hope you're not injured. Let me feel. <laughs> Percy, how come your beautiful plumage has gone from soft and downy to 200 kilometers north to south and 130 kilometers east to west of uneven terrain, ranging from a cool and mountainous high veld to a hot and dry low veld? Have you been overeating? Swaziland. Blind person. No matter. I love you all the same. Moral. Love is blind. Well, that's one that works better on the printed page. Okay, right. Sweden. <laughs> Sweden. I will never, well, I'll never get to Sweden in any case, but, uh, you know. I apologise in advance, Sweden, for this video. Well, actually, this is probably on the next video because I don't know how far I'll get into. So, Sweden. Details of very early Sweden are sketchy. Unfortunately, most of the sketches were watercolours and have run over the millennia. <laughs> Also, the Pleistocene glaciation scoured the landscape clean and covered much of it in deep quaternary sediments. That's also my excuse to the wife as to why the back garden is such a mess. <laughs> my now ex-wife, I should point out. Do you know when she left, she said, Ten years with you, I faked all my orgasms. I said, what do I care? I wasn't there for most of them. <laughs> I'm not saying my ex-wife had a drink problem, but the doctor asked for a few urine sample and he had to pay excise duty on it. Oh, good evening, friends. Back to the book, okay. Uh, let's all of them, excuse me, therefore. No undisputed early or middle Paleolithic sites or finds are known from Sweden or my back garden. Building on this, I have ascertained as a world exclusive that the prehistory of Sweden went like this. 150,000 BC, very cold. 125,000 BC, very cold. 100,000 BC, very cold. 75,000 BC. Very cold. 50,000 BC. You're ahead of me. Very cold. 25,000 BC. Freeze your tits, throw bollocks off cold. 20,000 BC. Very cold. 22nd of April, 17,458 BC. Quite nice out, but a sharp wind. <laughs> 15,000 BC. Very cold. As far as was currently known until I wrote the above, the country's prehistory began in the Alarod Interstadal circa 12,000 BCE with late Paleolithic hunting camps of the Brom culture at the edge of the ice in what is now the country's, turn the page, uh, southernmost province. These groups found it hard to prosper because one, they were vegetarians, and two, there were no vegetables. <laughs> um, couldn't we at least become pescatarians as Schwordnest the Hungry? What's one of those? He inquired. He drap struck the even hungrier. The fish piped up Hrundrek the belly rumbler. Great, exclaimed Prodost the so hungry I'd eat my own knackers if I could defroth them. Where do we find some fish? Two places. 
answered, da -dun -da -dun -da -dun -da -da, they're so hungry I'm going to eat props for a snack as soon as he falls asleep. <laughs> One, under this 135 foot thick sheet of ice. Oh, sheet. <laughs> or two, just take some out of the mouth of that friendly looking polar bear over there. Sometime later that day, growl, growl, or hmm, yum, growl, translated from the polar bear. I say the balls of this prehistory fella taste much better than halibut does. So I got distracted by my friendship bracelet falling off. This is a piece of trivia, but this is one of the two things I carry with me everywhere I go. I'm sure you're watching, my children. So Dylan, your friendship bracelet you gave me and Emily in my back pocket, that post-it note in that envelope with I Love Dad on it. Where do we get to here? Um, shortly before the close, actually I might go back and turn this off because these clips take up forever on YouTube to load. Boop, boop.